In this concluding message in this series, we share three simple practices we must maintain in engaging God's word to see his word work in our lives. All right. Uh, let's turn our Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and just give a brief word. And we're going to rise, and rise up and make our declaration this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. To the glory of God through us. For all the promises of God, every word, every word, every promise of God in Christ is in yes. That means there's no a, a maybe, might be, could happen. In Christ, all the promises of God are yes. And what God is looking for is an amen from us for the glory of God. Amen? So we say an amen. The yes is already there. We say an amen to every promise of God. When you say amen, you're just saying, so be it. You're just saying, I agree with that. And I am yielding to that. I am aligning myself to that promise. For every promise of God in him is a yes. And now there's an amen from us. For the glory of God. So I want to encourage you and I. You and me to give our amen. Every time you speak the word. You are giving your amen to the promise of God. That means you are saying so be it in my life. I'm agreeing with the promise of God. I'm coming into alignment with that for the glory of God. And then we see God's promises fulfilled. Let's rise up, please, to our feet. We're going to make our declaration. So if you brought your Bible, hold it high up in the air. Say this loud, bold, and strong with me. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy. Cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to those around next to you. Shake hands, please. Say hello. Greet them. Amen. You may be seated, please. The last few weeks we've been talking about the simple truth that God's word works. God's word works. And we've just tried to remind us and bring on our hearts this, you know, this very important thing that, that God works by his word. And many, many times we say, God, I want you to do something in my life. God, I want you to set me free. I want you to heal me. I want you to deliver me. God, I want you to bless me. I want you to prosper me. I want you to guide me. I want you to direct my steps. So there's so many things that we want God to do in our lives. 
And in that context, we must understand this very important truth. That God works by his word. His word is very important. And he's going to answer your prayer. But he's going to do that work in your life and mine by his word. Now, I'm not saying there are no other ways that God works. Of course, God works uh, in many other ways. For example, it's just uh, God works just by his presence and glory. Just by his presence. So two Sundays ago, you know, we just spent that whole time in worship. And there was no message preached. Right? That's okay. Relax. <laughs> You're in his presence. And God's presence uh, is so powerful. Uh, the Bible says even the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. So just being in that presence changes our lives. It heals us, delivers us, things happen, we, we are made whole. So God works by his presence and, the, the manif- and his manifest glory. God works through the anointing of his spirit. God works through the gifts of the spirit. There are other ways that God works, of course. But one of the primary ways, the dominant way that we must understand is that God works by his word. And so we began this, this study some, several weeks ago, uh, just reminding ourselves of this, and that God's word carries God's power. The word of God is a carrier of the power of God, bringing God's power into our very lives. And then in the second part of this mess series, we talked about, we just listed some of the ways, some of the things that God's word does in our lives. This is not an exhaustive list, but we talked about a few things. We said the word sets us free. The word cleans us out. The word heals us. The word renews our mind. The word enlightens us, brings us God's instruction and direction and revelation, guidance. The word, the word builds faith and the word empowers us. So these are some of the things. And of course, you can add to this list. The word of God does all of these things in our lives as we open up our hearts to his word. Then in the third part three of this message, we said, you know, how do we get that word into our hearts? How do we get that word into our hearts? So we looked at two things. One is we looked at the parable of the sower. And in that parable, Jesus unveils to us a mystery of the kingdom. He says, you know, this is a secret which I'm unveiling about how the kingdom of God works. And he said, the sower sows the seed. The seed is the word of and so he explains to us how, uh, the, you know, how the condition of our heart is important. And he tells us, you know, if your heart is like this, it will be good ground. So we mentioned three things. We need to understand his word. We need to receive his word. And we need to retain his word in order to see that seed produce in our lives. Do you all remember that? We have to understand it. We have to receive it. And we have to retain it, hold on to it, because we bring forth fruit with endurance, is what Jesus said. And then we also talked about meditation. Both in the old, we see meditation both in the old and in the new, uh, although not too much in the new. Uh, But meditation in the word is a very important process by which we receive that word into our hearts. And just to break that down, we gave three simple Uh, steps, if you want to call it, in the process of meditation. Number one. All right, let's try again. (laughs) How do you meditate in the word? First, you contemplate. Contemplation. Second, visualization. Third, confession. Right? So this is our engaging with the word. And we explain this. This is how we meditate in the word. So when you meditate in the word of God, you contemplate. You're thinking deeply on the word of God. Contemplation, visualization is simply you're painting a, a picture on the canvas of your imagination. Of what that word is. That word coming alive in you. So visualize the word. You imagine the word. God gave us an imagination. So you imagine the word. So you contemplate. Uh, visualize and you confess. That means you are muttering, you're saying the word. This is how we meditate in that word. And when we meditate in the word, we are assimilating that word into our hearts. Or like the Bible says, we are receiving the engrafted word, which will be able to then work in us. So this morning, we want to conclude this series. And I just want to very simply share three important 
and yet simple practices we must maintain in order for the word of God to work in our lives. So through meditation, through the reading of the word and the meditating in God's word, you are receiving that word on good ground into your heart. And you are nurturing that seed and you're letting that seed be watered and, and built up in you. And faith is being built in your heart. But then there are these three simple practices we need to maintain so that that word can work in our lives. Three simple things. You and I need to speak the word, act on the word, and stand firm in faith on the word. You've heard me say this many, many times, but it's good to hear it again. Amen? Since we tend to forget. We need to speak the word. We need to act on the word, do what the word says. And we need to stand firm in faith on the word. Now, there are many different ways we could approach and, 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 and you know, uh, explain or explain these three things from the word of God, but I'm just going to use three stories, three simple stories. So Sunday, this morning is like Sunday school, story time. <laughs> three simple stories remind us of three simple stories. There are many stories in the Bible that we could look at to see these things are uh, played out for us, uh, but we're going to just look at three simple stories just to remind us that, look, as I'm reading the word and as I'm meditating in the word, as I'm hearing the word, I also need to do these three things. I need to speak the word, I need to act on the word, and I need to stand firm in faith on the word of God. The first story we pick up from Numbers chapters 13 and 14, uh, which is the story of uh, the people of Israel as they are getting ready to enter into the promised land. They have journeyed this far, uh, they are close to the land of promise. And uh, God tells Moses, you know, send out 12 spies that they will go so that they can go spy out the land and then get ready to go in, right? So they pick out one leader from each of the tribes and they send them out to spy the land. And these 12 spies come back with their reports. And they all are in agreement that the land is just the way God said it. It was a wonderful land or as you would say, it was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was, it was wonderful. It was good. Look at the fruit of the land. They brought some of the fruit back as well. Look at the fruit of the land. It's exactly the way God said it. It's a wonderful land. But 10 of them said, and they all agreed, sorry, they also agreed that there were giants in the land. Yeah, the people in the land are really big. They're really big. And now 10 of them responded like this. You see, there are giants in the land. So that's the problem. We can't go take the land because we are like grasshoppers before them. It's a big problem. Joshua and Caleb saw the same land. They saw the same giants. But they said, God is with us. And if God is with us, they are like bread for us. So two different pictures. They saw the same giants. But remember something, uh, as Moses reminded his people in, in Deuteronomy 7 verse 1, he said, The Lord your God is with you. When you go into the land, he will cause you to overcome cities and nations mightier than you. So God had already given his word to his people. When I take you into the land, you're going to fight. And he named all the tribes, all the different tribes that they have to fight. And he said, I will give you nations and cities and nations who are stronger and mightier than you. So had God given them his word? Yes. It's so only spoken to them. I'm going to help you take over and conquer cities and nations that are stronger and mightier than you. I've given you my word. Ten of them saw the giants. They had the promise, but they spoke their fear. Or they just spoke facts. The fact is, the giants were big. The fact is, maybe they did look like grasshoppers in their sight. That's a fact. 
But there is something superior to the fact. It is the word of God. It is the promise of God. We are not denying the fact. But we are saying God is bigger than the fact. We are saying the God who created this world is more powerful and he's, he's, he's so greater. He can change the facts. He can change the present. He can change the circumstance. He can change the situation. Now Joshua and Caleb, they saw the same giants. But they saw it in comparison to the God who is with them. They didn't compare the giant to themselves. Maybe if they did, they would say, yeah, equations are the same. We are like grasshoppers. But they chose not to do that. They said, God is with us. And they are like bread for us. Let's go eat them up. Let's go have them. We'll take them. So what did they speak? They spoke aligned to what God had said. God had said, I'm going to give you nations that are stronger and mightier than you. So you and I have a choice. You can speak the fact or you can speak the truth. What's the difference? Facts can change. Truth is eternal. Truth doesn't change. Facts will change. It's there today. It's not there tomorrow. But truth remains. And you have a choice to either speak the facts or speak the truth. And so you and I must choose to speak the truth. The word of God. Declare that word over your situation. Declare that word in the face of the giant. Declare that word in the face of that sickness. Declare that word in the face of that need. Declare that word in the face of whatever might be oppressing you or holding you down. Because that word is truth. And like we said, God's word will prevail. Everything in this natural world is subject to the word of God. Everything in this natural world is subject to the word of God. And so you speak the word. You speak it to your circumstances. You declare that word. So first, speak God's word. The second thing is simple. is to act on the word. That means you do what the word says. Act in alignment to the word of God. And for this, we will go to Luke chapter 6, or Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. This is the uh, incident where Jesus has, uh, uh, Luke 5, he's come to the sea, seaside. And uh, Peter, James, and John were fishermen. They'd spent the whole night fishing. And they just come back to the seashore. And they were cleaning their nets, getting ready to go and get some rest. Right? So they've been working all night trying to fish and they haven't caught anything. And Jesus comes by. He borrows Peter's boat and preaches a message while Peter and his team, they're cleaning up their nets. He hands the boat back to Peter and then he tells Peter something. He says, launch out into the deep for a catch. Now, what would you do if you were in that situation? You, you and I, what would we, we have done? I mean, Peter is a trained fisherman. This is a carpenter telling a fisherman to do something. So Peter must have said, you know, excuse me, you mind your business. <laughs> I'll mind mine. <laughs> Just thinking in the natural. Or Peter may have said, you know, I worked all night. I'm tired. I'm just about done cleaning my nets. Maybe I'll try it out tomorrow, Jesus. <laughs> and he, he could have made any excuse. But what was Peter's response? He said, Lord, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my nets. It was not an easy task. He had got to call his team back. Guys, come back. We're going again. I was like, what happened to Peter today? <laughs> and we've, we've covered this whole, you know, I don't know how many kilometers around that. They, they've covered all night. You know, we've covered this whole area. There's nothing there. But Peter, they all get back in. 
Peter pushes out into the deep. He throws his net in. But this time, it's different. He's not able to pull the net back. It's full of fish. So he's calling all his friends. Come on, we've got to do this together. What was one thing that he did? He acted on the word. He said, nevertheless, at your word. And so you and I will have those nevertheless moments. Lord, I, I, I am seeing the fact. I know I have worked all night. I know I have done all of these things. I, I know this has happened and that has happened. Nevertheless, because your word says, I am taking you at your word. God's word must be final authority in our lives. Amen? I'm not denying the circumstance or the situation or Peter didn't deny it. He said, look, I've worked all night. But because you've spoken a word, I'm acting on that word. I am doing that word. I'm doing it now when you're telling me to do it. And so for you and me, that same challenge is there. That, that we not only hear the word, but act on that. But do the word. Do it by faith. Now, you've been meditating on the word. You've been putting that word in your heart. And, and, and you've been speaking it. But you also act in line with the word. Get out. Do it. When Peter did that word, when he acted on that word, the power of God caused something to take place which was supernatural. It would not have happened. It was a power of God at work. But you've got to act on that word. You've got to do it. Right? So, if it means loving somebody that you say, I can't, God, I can't love this person. No. Do it. Love. Give. Pray for somebody. Do that. Step out. You know, maybe a friend in, in the office tells you, hey, I got this pain in my body. And he said, well, I've attended weekend school of healing and deliverance. <laughs> I've been taught how to minister. But God, I'm, I'm shivering now. What do I do? Oh, you've got to act on the word. You've got to lay hands on the sick to see them recover. So you act on it. It's okay, can I pray for you? You know, you want to go to the men's room and pray for him? It's okay. <laughs> Whatever, you, where you feel comfortable. But you've got to act on the word. You've got to lay hands. You've got to pray. You've got to minister. And soon you and I will be comfortable praying with anybody, anywhere. You know, on Wednesday night, I think, well, I forget, yeah, it must be Wednesday. Him and I, we actually stopped somewhere to eat something and a friend came by. We were on the roadside and then he started telling about his condition. As soon as he, you know, we had finished the conversation, he said, hey, can we pray for you right now? Right? So right there on the street, pray. So you, you, you're, you've, you've, you, you, you've overcome all those inhibitions. doesn't matter. I don't need to go to a holy place. Where I am, Jesus is, it's holy. <laughs> I can pray right now, right here. Amen? So you, you need to bring yourself to that place. Act on the word. Wherever we are, the word of God will work wherever you are. You just have to act on that word and see the results. See the work of God. But it's only when we act on the word will we see the power of God go into effect. And the last thing is this. We have to stand firm in faith in the word. And for this, we just remind ourselves of Abraham's story. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, Do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. You know. But imitate the example. Of those who through faith and patience, they inherit the promise. There are times you will see a miracle instantaneous. And we all love that. We all love the instantaneous miracles. And I lay hands on them and they ask, how are you good? I'm feeling good. That's great. And that's wonderful. And, and thank God. You know, that's something we want and we will press into, continue to press. But thank God that, you know, sometimes, you know, even if things take a bit of time. You and I must learn to stand firm in faith. 
And the Bible points us to that. It says, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That means they don't give up if it takes a little bit of time. And one of the mysteries of the kingdom we saw last Sunday that Jesus unveiled for us in Mark 4. He said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed begins to spring up, grows up, and then he puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. He says, look, this is a secret about the kingdom of God. This is a mystery of how the kingdom of God operates. And this principle applies across the board. That means that everything God does in his kingdom, so is the kingdom of God. The seed principle applies to everything God does in his kingdom. What is a seed principle? You sow something, it is a passage of time, but you'll get the harvest. You don't know how that seed is going to produce. You don't understand everything of, of how that seed germinates and so on. But that seed will produce. There's a passage of time. It'll produce. So also, you stand firm in faith. Think about Abraham. You know, it only takes nine months to get a baby. For Abraham, it took 25 years. God, why 25 years? Okay, we'll give you 12 months, God. It's just three months grace. <laughs> I mean, Isaac could be born. But 25 years from the time God promised Abraham that he was going to be the father of a great nation, he waited 25 years just to see Isaac, Abraham and Sarah had to wait. Why? We don't know the answer. But there's one thing God points us to. And he says, look at Abraham. Follow his faith. Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So you and I in our lives, we need to be in that place where we say, God, you have spoken and I'm standing firm in faith. On the word of God. I will not give up. Because this word will produce in my life. You stand firm in faith. Amen. So having received the word into your heart. You heard the word. You meditate. You're putting the seed of God's word in your heart. Remember these three things. You speak that word. You act on that word. And you stand firm in faith on the word of God. It will work in your life. We'll close with this verse. First Thess Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. It's something we've seen before. But just want to remind us. Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. He says for this reason. We also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God. Which you heard from us. You welcomed it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth. The word of God. Which also effectively works in you who. The word of God, how you received it as the word of God. The word of God, which effectively works in you who believe. God's word is at work. God's word works. It works in the lives of those who believe that word. So, I want to encourage you to take that word in your life. So maybe you're saying, God, I want to be successful. Maybe you've been somewhat successful, but you want to see yourself being more successful in your work, in, in, in what you do. Your business or your profession, your career. But take that word. Now, all you need is one word from God. One word from God can change your life. One word. But I encourage you to take a few promises. Okay? <laughs> maybe four or five. Just take a few. I mean, you may find many promises in the word of God. It's okay. Take a few. Meditate in them. Concerning success. Concerning prosperity in your life. Or concerning healing. Or concerning an area where you would want to be free from something that's holding you down. Take the word of God. And if you have a loose tongue, take some of the scriptures from the book of Proverbs. He... Who keeps his mouth shut is counted wise. <laughs> you know? 
take a few of those words. Meditate. Say, God, I've got a loose tongue. I need help. See what happens. Or if it's a short temper, whatever. You know, I, I, there's so many areas of life. You take it. So God, your word says this. Take a few scriptures on that subject, on that matter. That you want God, you want to see God's power at work in your life. Meditate in it. Speak this word. Speak this word. Speak it. Declare it over your life. Then you act in line with that word. And stand firm on it. You will see God's word work. You will see the power of God released in your life. It is so simple. All of us can do it. Amen. It's, you don't have to be some superhero in the spirit realm. <laughs> to be able to do this. It is so simple. All of us can. By his word. By his word. He works in our lives. The power of God is released. And miracles happen. Healings happen. What people say cannot change. Changes. By his word. Amen. We're going to get ready to close. Um, right after the service. I'm going to be heading off to the water baptism. Those of you who have come prepared for the water baptism. Uh, we will meet at the swimming pool. Right down the uh, the the ground, the parking lot on the other side. Uh, those, who want, those of you who want to come and witness, you're welcome to come and do that. Uh, so I will not be here for prayer because right after we finish, I will head down uh, to the swimming pool uh, to, to the water baptism service. So why don't we all please stand to our feet. We're going to pray. Father, we just thank you for the power of your word. That your word is alive and full of power. And I just ask, Lord God, that this revelation, this understanding will grip our hearts. Every one of us, God. That we will come to your word with holy reverence. Knowing that this word will work in our lives, changing us, transforming us, setting us free, changing everything about us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to each one of us areas that, that you want to work in. That we will go to the word, open our lives to your word. By the power of your spirit. See great things happen. Set a fire. Set a fire inside of us. A passion for your word. A passion for the work of your spirit. Set a fire inside of us. Father, I just speak your blessing, your prosperity, your success over each of our lives, that you will be glorified in our lives. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. Before we close this morning, I want to take a minute just to give an invitation for anyone here. If you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, you don't know what it means to be born again, to receive God's life in you. Maybe you've attended church, maybe you've come in and gone. But if you've never been born again, you've never received Jesus into your life, the Bible tells us we need to make a decision. We need to believe in Jesus. And whoever believes in Him the Bible says, will not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gives the power to become children of God. So if you've never done that in your life before we close, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. If you feel that desire in your heart to do it, you can pray this prayer with me. And we will close right after that. So if there's anyone here this morning and you feel in your heart, I need Jesus in my life. I've never done this before. 
I want to do it this morning. I invite you to just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. I believe you died for my sins. That you rose up again. That you're alive today. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And help me to follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray and we'll close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Stand firm in faith in God's Word. Have a great week. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at abcwo.org. Also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.